Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I am going to make fasting and hormones ridiculously simple. Fasting, it's free, it's time efficient, anyone can do it. I'm gonna break down the three sex hormones. This is really important because we've got estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and they all behave a little different with fasting. Here's what I want you to know about estrogen. Women, if you have a cycle, day one through day 10 of your cycle, your body's trying to build up estrogen. And in that moment, fasting shines. If insulin is high, glucose is high, estrogen is going to perish. So when it comes to fasting, estrogen loves fasting, estrogen loves low carb, estrogen wants insulin to stay low. But that's not the end of the story. As you move into that ovulation window, day 11 to day 15, estrogen needs to be broken down. So it needs a healthy gut microbiome. So if you've been on a lot of birth control, you've been on a lot of uh, antibiotics, you may not have enough diverse microbiome to be able to break estrogen down. So as you move into that ovulation window, we wanna focus in on more greens and what I call the three Ps polyphenol, probiotic, and prebiotic foods. It's a wonderful tool as you move into that ovulation window. The other thing we know about estrogen is that if you are a workout queen and you like to do a lot of cardio, great, do it day one till about day 15, maybe day 13 in the middle of ovulation, because cardio typically is going to keep your glucose down, it's gonna keep you more insulin sensitive. Not completely, but it is going to have an impact on insulin sensitivity. So cardio will do well when we're trying to improve estrogen. Now, postmenopausal women, this is where this knowledge is really helpful because when we move through menopause, estrogen declines. So we gotta fight for every little aspect of estrogen we can, we can gather. So we want more fasting in those postmenopausal years. We want more keto, we want more greens, even more cardio will be good, although not at the sake of muscle building, and that's for a whole nother video. The last thing I'll tell you is if you're taking a mineral supplement at all, which I highly recommend you do, zinc is your go-to mineral to help support estrogen. Now the behaviors you're gonna wanna stay away from if you know that you have low estrogen is you wanna stay away from anything that brings insulin up for a significant period of time. So this is gonna be your standard Western diet. These are the bad oils, these are the refined carbohydrates, these are the toxic ingredients. This is what's making estrogen go awry for so many women and men. So we're gonna to want to keep insulin down by cleaning up our diet. We wanna keep repairing that microbiome by feeding it the foods that will keep the diversity. Eat a lot of different foods is gonna help with the diversity in the gut and you're gonna to wanna to keep your liver stressors under control. So things like alcohol and medication are gonna make it really difficult on not just estrogen production, but estrogen metabolism. So if you know you are fighting for estrogen, or you've had a, a, a Dutch test or a hormone test, or perhaps you're a postmenopausal woman, these are the keys that I want you to focus on. Okay. Perimenopausal women are women that are still cycling. What I wanna tell you is progesterone, especially in those perimenopausal years, is the hormone we want to make sure that we magnify as much as possible. And progesterone does not like long fasts because progesterone does not want cortisol to spike. So if you're tracking your cycle, Progesterone comes in the week before your period. This is the time we don't want to fast. We also do not want to be high in, in a, a ketogenic diet at this point because your brilliant body actually will keep insulin, will make insulin a little bit higher so it can keep glucose up. It needs glucose to make progesterone. So if you're tracking your cycle that week before, we wanna make sure that we keep glucose a little bit higher. 
We also want to slow living down. We don't want to fast as long. We want to keep cortisol down. So there's enough what we call DHEA, which is a precursor to making progesterone. We want to reserve all of that so that it can make the proper amount of progesterone. And lastly, the, the workouts you do matter for progesterone as well. You wanna focus on slower type workouts. You wanna make sure that you're doing more yoga, more hikes. You don't wanna be pushing your body when your body's trying to make progesterone. So those are key for this beautiful hormone that calms you and makes you feel more nurturing towards yourself, might make you feel a little more inner. If you are postmenopausal, I really want to encourage you at least once or twice a week it's to make sure that you're stepping out of ketosis, you're not doing the longer fasts, and that you're taking these other things into consideration. The other thing, by the way, I think I said this, that progesterone does not want you to spike cortisol. So if you are living very stressful life and you're fasting at the same time the week before your period, you are gonna start to notice that you'll start spotting, your hair will fall out, and it, you're gonna get less of a result with fasting, which is why it's so important that we talk about the nuance of progesterone when it comes to fasting. Okay, have you been watching my videos and you're like, I don't know how to put this stuff all together? You might need my fasting lifestyle free course. I'll teach you exactly how to do it. Just click on the link below. It'll take it to you and it's absolutely free. My gift to you. Okay, last thing. Testosterone thrives with fasting, intermittent fasting. So here's where I'm going to separate out women and men. Intermittent fasting, for, uh, 13 to 15 hours to improve testosterone production, which for women happens in our ovulatory window, somewhere between day 10 and day 15. We wanna keep your, your fast around 15 hours. Men, if you go to 24 hours of fasting, you get an increase in testosterone. So if you're trying to bring testosterone up, you wanna go into those longer fasts. Women, if you're trying to bring testosterone up and you're cycling, we wanna keep it closer to about 15 hours in that ovulatory window. If you are postmenopausal, then I would tell you that throw some 24 hour fasts in there, here or there, and let's see how that brings your testosterone production up. The other things that testosterone needs or thrives on is vitamin D. You wanna get your vitamin D levels up into the 60s and 70s. We also know you need a healthy liver for testosterone. When testosterone is surging, you're gonna get better results with your strength training program. And just like all the other hormones, testosterone loves when you open up your eating to more diversity of vegetables, specifically greens. What testosterone does not like is it does not like toxins, specifically phthalates. So if you're worried about low testosterone levels, whether you're a man or a woman, then you wanna make sure you're not your colognes, your air fresheners, your household cleaners. You wanna make sure that you're keeping those natural and you're not having synthetic toxins like phthalates come into your life because that will tank testosterone. And very similar to progesterone, just not as sensitive, we wanna make sure that your stress levels are in balance because high stress will start to bring testosterone down. Now it's different for men and women how that will play out, but for women right now, I will tell you if you know that your testosterone is low, look at your toxic load and make sure you're looking at your stress levels because all of that will play in to this beautiful hormone. So for simplicity's sake, I wanted to do a video breaking each one of these down. You can take a picture of this screen right here with all the summary. You can go and follow it. If you know what hormone you're low in, then just look at where it thrives, look at where it perishes, and make sure that you're avoiding what perishes and make sure you're adding in what it needs to thrive. They drive our moods, they drive our behaviors, they drive our motivation, both men and women. Women, we're a little more sensitive to the ebbs and flows of these hormones. So this is why I want to do a video breaking each one down. Okay, where are my gals that are struggling with hormonal imbalance? Bloated, feeling like you're not making progress with weight loss? 
you need to add these foods in so that you can support better hormonal health. There is a lifestyle that estrogen wants you to live, and there is a lifestyle that progesterone wants you to live.